My name is Sarah Mehmet. Uh, I'm a, a Muslim Australian and I'm actually uh, descended from a couple of Jewish convicts, believe it or not. Um, and from those uh, men who were brought here, um, the, a large uh, sort of clan grew and married into other um, clans. It was French, German, Russian. Um, it's somewhere along the line over the years they lost their religion. They were not really religious Jews. Um, so by the time you got down to my grandfather, uh, he converted to Mormonism. Um, and also my mother was a Mormon. And at one stage, probably in her early 20s, she was a door-to-door -door, uh, Mormon missionary. Uh, but she became disillusioned with that and let it go because she felt that, didn't feel authentic uh, going around preaching something that she really didn't in her heart believe in herself. And um, so I was raised with, without any religion really. Um, except, uh, I guess, what is sort of ingrained in Australian culture. So, you know, I went to Sunday school, uh, this, this kind of thing. And I, I, I wanted to do that. I remember I, I had a, a, a wanting to, to do that. You didn't have to do that, but I was interested. Um, I was a sort of curious child, um, always had an inquiring mind. And I remember when I was very little, I used to try and imagine, uh, think of, you know, try to think about God, what was God and this sort of thing. Um, I don't know if that sort of thing usually preo preoccupies young children, but um, that was the sort of thing that I used to think about. So um, there was that, and then I guess uh, in my early teens I experimented with Christianity uh, a little bit. Um, I joined a church and... Um, sort of went along with, with all that and um, you know, there seemed to be something there to me that was good and um, true and um, I sort of went out of that uh, and just became a normal teenager. <laughs> Yeah, when I was 21 I moved to Sydney and I spent eight years there and I went to uni and I worked and um, it was when I was down there that I first in, in, had an encounter with Islam and uh, it was through a, um, a movie called Malcolm X which probably a lot of people have seen and I was about 22 or something and I went with my friend and I was very impressed with this person um, I was impressed with his humility. I, I'd never before seen a man, or a, a public figure of a man, uh, stand up and admit he was wrong about something. I remember that really affected me. Um, because when he goes to Mecca, and that was another thing that really affected me, was when he went to Hajj, and he previously had been this white people hating uh, he was in the nation of Islam. They, they thought white people were the devil and they had these kind of beliefs. And um, he went to Hajj and he prayed next to blonde haired, blue eyed men and uh, all different colours. And he um, realised he was wrong and he admitted that in front of the whole world. And that really impressed me. And I was uh, also impressed with the fact that, you know, the same thing that he probably, you know, thought when he went to Mecca was, wow, you know, here's a place where, you know, there seems to be, you know, um, an equality among the races. Um, uh, so that affected me so much. I was a bit of a eccentric sort of character um, in my early 20s and I very much just lived according to what I felt, you know, according to what inspired me. And um, after that film, I actually um, felt so touched that I knelt down in the aisle. I don't, and I don't really know why I did that. 
I'm sure, I don't know. If, <laughs> I've probably got lots of people looking, but I, I, I don't remember. I just remember do, doing that um, because I was so touched by that. So I sort of think that that's where I first felt um, what a little bit about what Islam can be about. Um, but I didn't pursue it. I sort of became a Malcolm X fan. I read the book and I bought the T-shirt. You know, I, I didn't go past the person to, you know, what was behind that. And uh, it wasn't till later on I just had my second child. She was five months old. Um, this is almost five years ago that I went to a, a what they called a dower day um, um, put on on the Gold Coast by some Muslim women where they were sharing information about Islam and talking about misconceptions and trying to sort of bridge uh, gaps. And I found out about this through... Uh, I was involved in the home birth community and I was on somebody's mailing list and I got an email about this. I thought, I'll go to that because I'd been a bit interested in... Muslim people and Islam because of I'd become a bit politically aware as well. I uh, we'd just been through you know, September 11 and uh, was it was it around that time? It must have been yes, a couple of years down the track. And I was I just remember there was in the news about Iraq and. Um, the atrocities at the Abu Ghraib prison and I, I, those images very much affected me and made me start questioning what's sort of going on, you know. I, I thought we were the good guys, you know. <laughs> I didn't exactly think that. I was a little bit more aware than that, but that was sort of, you know, I couldn't believe that, you know, people that were supposedly gone over there to liberate society, even though it was not... It was only a. It wasn't the whole. It was a group, certain group that you know, perpetrated those particular things. Um, I just thought, I don't know, it just deeply affected me, and I wanted to look into what was sort of. I wanted to know more about what was really sort of going on, and um, and I began to understand a bit about um, you know Islam in the media and. I began to feel for the Muslim people, you know, they were being unfairly sort of discriminated against and generalised about and, and I'd, I'd always had a sense of uh, justice. I remember, I don't know if it's my Jewish <laughs> blood, but I remember being very little and watching a program about um, the Nazis and, uh, the, and I, there was images of the concentration camps and I was only about my son's age, 10 years old, maybe younger, I remember picking up something and throwing it at the television. I was so upset <laughs> at this terrible in injustice perpetrated against a certain sector of people in the world by another group, you know. And so I researched and I... So that was another thing. When I saw this invitation, I thought, I'd like to be a part of something that, you know, is proactive and you know works against these prejudices and maybe helps to bridge these gaps as well. So I'm going to go and uh, meet these women. And I also thought about my children who have a background, a Turkish background, um, a Muslim background, although my husband was not practising um, at all and uh, his family hadn't been particularly practising either. So... Um, uh, I thought it'd be good for my children if I was able to tell them something about if they ever asked me about Islam. So I went to this group and um, this day, and um, I walked into this room and there was all these uh, women wearing scarves. And actually, the first woman that opened the door was uh, in full cover, um, which didn't bother me. It never ever had bothered me. If I ever saw a woman in a burqa or a niqab. Um, I just used to thought, well, she must be a very religious woman. I associated that particular dress with, you know, just must be a very strictly religious person. And it never frightened me or worried me. Um, and so I had an amazing day there. Um, it was like 
because you don't get taught much about Islam or you didn't, when I was at school, when, when you do encounter it and start learning about it, it's, it's like opening up this beautiful treasure box and it's, it's just full to the brim, but you never saw it, you never knew it was there. It was um, sort of, I don't know, I read lots of religious books, um, but I always bypassed the Qur'an. You know, it's almost like it was, I don't know why, I didn't have anything against it. But, um, once you do delve into it, it's, um, you know, it was amazing. And um, the women, about, about half a dozen women, they gave talks on different things and I thought it all sounded like it really made sense. And um, I liked the fact that there was uh, religious people talking about one God that really resonated with me as well. It wasn't, you know, this is our God and it's a different God. It was, there's one. And so that impressed me and the women impressed me. They were you know, funny and they were really strong and really smart. And then somebody started to, somebody outside started to, I couldn't call it singing, I didn't know what it was, but this beautiful sound came. And I was just absolutely dumbstruck and I said to one of the women what is that and she said that he's calling us to prayer and it, I felt like crying it was the most beautiful I remember thinking it was the most ancient and holy thing I'd ever heard it just touched something very deep you know and um, I thought oh dear <laughs> I've got a bit more than I bargained for coming here so over the next month or so I started disappearing behind books about Islam. And I read the Qur'an. I, I had that beautiful experience you have. You hear about, um, you read the Qur'an and you start to read nature. Because there's a lot of things in the Qur'an that says, look at this, look at that, look at, you know, and it sort of works together and it uh, uh, works in your heart. And I... Remember coming to the part, there's a part that says, you know, so, so, so get you down and prostrate in front of your God, you know. I thought, yeah, <laughs> I need to do that. You know, I really felt the authority of that. And I um, started, you know, experimenting with doing that. And all this was sort of going on at the same time as I was having contact with Muslim people and... Um, sort of just develop, started developing a bit of a consciousness, a change in my consciousness over a month or so, and actually in my dress as well. Um, my husband started noticing my, my sleeves lengthening <laughs> and things, um, and I tried to talk to him about it, and it really wasn't working. He didn't really like the sound of it that much. Um, it was when I stopped talking to him. I thought, no, I'm just not going to talk to him about it anymore. And then uh, we ended up, his father passed away. May Allah have mercy on him. And um, that was a really amazing day because we found out in the morning and then later in the day a Qur'an arrived in the mail, um, an Arabic Qur'an that um, one of the brothers we'd met at this Dawa day uh, promised to send to my husband and then we, oh, it was amazing we went to Melbourne and we went to the Janaza, the funeral and it was very sad but I remember being very sort of impressed by that because it was very simple it was very beautiful and um, very frank and, and the men you know placed dad in the grave with their hands and all of this just Oh, it just really touched me. And, um, I thought it, thought it was really beautiful. And uh, so that was all part of our coming to Islam as well. And when we got back from there, you know, it was, it had been Ramadan, you see. And um, on the last night of Ramadan, we were going to go to the masjid with some friends, the mosque. And I, going out to the car, I said to my husband, I think I'm going to make my statement of faith tonight, I'm going to make my shahada. And he said, yeah, I think I will too. <laughs> and I was very surprised. Um, 
I was very happy about it, you know, because I was a bit worried <laughs> what happens if I become a Muslim and, and uh, my husband doesn't want to. You know? but it's his choice and once he was left alone to you know, have his own journey, he was guided as well. Um, and so we sat with friends and with the imam that night and we, um, we testified to our, our belief in one God and it went from there. And the next day was Eid Day, which was the big celebration and I put the hijab, I did put it on the first day. I'd been experimenting with it a bit. Um, very much it was personal for me. Um, I don't necessarily, certainly don't um, you know, say that everyone's got to wear it. It's, I feel it's a personal thing and I know there's a few different ways of understanding what's obligatory. And, but for me, I just felt I needed to do that. Um, and I, w I wanted to, I, I felt a different sense of my nakedness. I felt that included parts of me that it didn't previously. And I also felt um, I wanted to be recognised as a Muslim person. And I wanted to be, say, Salaamu Alaikum, and have, you know, Muslim women recognise me. And I had a pretty good time with the family. My mum was fine. My oldest sister probably was the most iffy about it but has come around really well. I find that powerful things are exposure to Muslim people and um, once people meet Muslim people, hang out a bit with Muslim people, they sort of start to get over their uh, concerns. And um, so even to the point that I'm travelling to some Muslim countries, inshallah, in January and my older sister might be accompanying me. Uh, so going to uh, Malaysia, Turkey and, and maybe Syria, but it could be Egypt now. So. I, I don't see any conflict between being an Australian and being a Muslim person. Uh, I think there's a wonderful, authentic sort of identity, that, you know, among Australian Muslim people. Um, and just there's the potential for um, for us to contribute uh, so much, and I don't see any conflict at all. I know, I know people do, but um, to my understanding, I, I certainly I don't. I, I, sp I haven't even really experienced any um, prejudice or any abuse or anything um, like that. Um, I found most people are very good and. Um, understanding and kind. And, um, so, and I feel grateful to be able to practice my religion, maybe even more freely here than in some Muslim countries. Um, some Muslim countries I wouldn't be able to wear my scarf to university. So it's interesting to reflect on things.